can, even in this place, can gather up. You'll benefit everybody else if we just have two or three out of the 150 that are here. If just two or three are gather up in His name. My goodness, you'll be a benefit to everybody else. Praise the Lord. Why does God show up in the crowd? In His crowd? Number one, it verifies this is my crowd. You remember as the, the Israelites, they were moving uh, uh, out of Egypt and they were moving through uh, uh, the, the or to, towards the promised land. That They kept asking the Lord to help them. And they would come up against their enemy and they would have battles. And, the, and they would say, Lord, would you help us? And the Lord would say, I will do this so that they will know that you belong to me. Yeah. And see, I just think that God still wants to do that today. God wants to so manifest Himself in this crowd so that they will know that we belong to the living God. That's who we belong to is the living God. And so you ask that question. You think about these verses. How do you get in the crowd? Well, I'm not in the crowd. I want to get in the crowd. How do you get in the crowd? You can't just get in the crowd. You can't just walk in one day and decide you want to be in the crowd. You got to be called into the crowd. Let, listen to this. If you decide you just want to get into the crowd and hang out with the Jesus crowd, but you haven't been called into the crowd, you won't hang out long. You'll hang out maybe a month or two. You might get charged emotionally for a little bit, but sooner or later, you'll leave the Jesus crowd. Or you'll just become a little, a little bitter. And it'll look, you'll be able to tell on your face. And you'll be able to tell in your talk. And all of those things. But to get into the Jesus crowd, you've got to be called. Into, matter of fact, the church is called the call out. Have you been called out? Remember the Mellow Westerns? Calling you out, Preston. <laughs> calling you out. Mm. You got your gun? <clears throat> Preston said, I got an eye can <laughs> He's got his sword with him. Praise the Lord. Hey, listen, that's, that's, that's what the Lord does for us. He calls us out of one crowd. I used to walk in an old crowd, that old worldly crowd, until he called me out of that crowd. Call, call me into his crowd. Praise God. You know, some people are like, I don't like big crowds. Now, you know, you heard that? I don't like to come to church because I don't like big crowds. But by the way, there's going to be a big crowd in heaven. I'm thinking, so it'd be a good time to get used to big crowds. Right? But this is what I, this is what I think. You, you really need to adjust to the crowd because Jesus visits in the crowd. Not only does Jesus visit by a devoted company, the crowd. But also, listen to this, he visits by divine appointment. There was a divine appointment at Naim that day. And, and this is how I know that. It's because that the Jewish custom was that when someone died, they would bury their dead that day. They wouldn't wait two or three days, get all the funeral arrangements, call family in from out of state, come in, get everything nice. No, 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 they didn't do that. As a matter of fact, all, there was no family out of state. All the family was right there. And so when someone died, they would have the funeral that day. They would carry them out in this casket outside of the city to a burial, designated burial place. And so that's exactly what they were doing there. And so as, as I'm studying this passage of Scripture, they're burying the dead on the same day that the boy died, the young man died. And so Jesus, it, it's very possible that this young man, he died in the morning time. And at the moment that he died... Jesus started getting up at Capernaum. And he started packing his bags and he started walking towards Naim that morning. Because he had a divine appointment at the gate of that city. Remember what happened at the gate of the city? The crowd that was walking with Jesus met the crowd that was walking with the dead and they came together. Listen to this. Listen to this. I believe that there are two crowds in this place this morning. Two crowds. Some of you have given your life to Jesus. There is full evidence that you belong to God. You're living for the Lord. You love the Lord. You're looking to the Lord. You're walking with Him. And then there's some probably in this room that maybe you're here because it's Mother's Day. Maybe you're here for some other reason. But you're part of another crowd. God has a divine appointment for you today. 
Listen, what no mistake that you came today. God has a divine appointment. He would love to sit down and visit with you and talk with you and minister to you. That's what He wants to do with all of us. We see these divine appointments in the Bible. And they're all set by God, by the way. God sets divine appointments. None of you ever go to your doctor and say, I'd like this day at this time. Your doctors look at you like, hmm, not happening. What we do is we go by the doctor's schedule. By the way, if you didn't know it or not, you're on God's schedule. You may not even be walking with the Lord, but you're on God's schedule. And God sets up divine appointments, and they're all perfectly timed. Moses was perfectly timed upon the mountain in the burning bush. Abraham was perfectly timed that divine appointment when he was about to execute his son upon that altar. Philip met the Ethiopian at the perfect time. Let me tell you something. Jesus showed up at the death of Lazarus at the tomb at the perfect time. He said, well, he was already dead four days. He was still on time. He, listen, listen, his time is not our time. Let me tell you something. He can cause dead things to come back to life. He can call dead marriages. He can call, cause a dead hope, a dead faith. By the way, faith without works, it is qualified biblically as dead. Maybe somebody in here, you just got a dead faith. You might be truly born again. But in all regards to all the activities in your life, listen, God can look down upon heaven and say, yeah, I know you, but you got a dead faith. See, our faith needs to rise up like the dead man out of the coffin. Our hope needs to rise up. Somebody got some dead joy. Jesus can show up. Divine appointment and say, hey, let me tell you something. I've got something for you. I think this morning, he may be saying to somebody this morning, i got something for you. I'm glad you're here, by the way. Let me do this to you. Let me say this to you. Divine appointments from the Lord. He sets those appointments. Listen, they're still in place today. It, it had a major impact upon this, this crowd of people. It was, listen, it wasn't just for the dead young man. It wasn't divine appointment. It affected more than just the mama. It, 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 affected, did not, it affected more than just the crowd. This divine appointment, this divine appointment, it affected the entire city of Nain. In Luke 7 11 is the only time in the Bible you find the word or the name of the city, Nain. I want to tell you something. If, let me tell you something. If God raised somebody from the dead today at a funeral, do you think you'd hear about it? If it happened in Jacksonville, if it happened in Tyler, I guarantee you, you'd, feel, you'd hear about it. Let me tell you something. God's still raising people from the dead. He's still raising people from the dead. And let me tell you something. They are the walking dead. They are the living dead. There is no life in them. The Bible says in Ephesians 2, you were dead in your trespasses and sins. I wonder if there's anybody dead here today. Don't even know you're dead. Let me tell you something. God will come next to you. And He will start stirring up your heart. And He will start trying to crank you up. You know how He does that? He starts dealing with your spirit. He starts stirring you up. And you start looking for the exits. Don't look for the exits. Surrender your life to God. Receive Him in faith. Recognize that's God dealing with your heart. Let me tell you something. That's really what we need. We need a divine appointment with the Lord. We need a divine appointment. We, we need this visit from God. God is so awesome. He does these things. And by the way, God's timing, it is today. His words in the Bible, it is right now. Today is the day of salvation. Now is the time. It is not tomorrow. That's what we do, isn't it? Don't we, anybody procrastinate? Don't raise your hand. Oh, I done got you, man, Drew. Got you, man. I should have said don't raise your hand before, should I? Yeah. Hey, listen, but you're not the only one. I think all of us have a, have a tendency to put things off. We put things off. And what does it do for us? Man, it gets us in trouble, doesn't it? Let me tell you something. Don't put the Lord off. Don't put the Lord off. If He deals with you today, receive Him today. Receive Him eagerly. Recognize that's Him dealing with you. When God visits, He visits with a devoted company. He visits, listen, what does it say? By divine appointment. And he visits with deep compassion. Let me tell you something. He wouldn't stir your heart. He wouldn't even fool with you 